Hello, this is Acar here, and I'm doing a tobacco hornworm update. I've showed you a few instances where a uh, tobacco hornworm will stop eating, and then they'll be, and then they'll just die. This one has also stopped eating, and he appears dead. However, there's a number of differences with this one that's different from the other ones that shows that he is not, in fact, dead at all. He is very much alive. And he's actually doing quite a lot of activity right now. You may not see it, but it, a whole lot of stuff is happening right now within him, within that uh, skin of his. Um, you guys aren't able to feel yourself, but as I feel him, he feels very firm to the touch. Now the other ones, when they would stop eating and they would die, they would get very, um, very just, I don't know how to explain it. They're, it would be like, I don't know how to explain it, it's just weird. They felt almost like, um, not firm at all, it was very like, if you would hold them like this, all their guts would go to one end of the body. That does not happen in this case. And he's also not very active either. And if you have noticed, I don't know if you can notice with this camera, but he is darker in color, and you can see there as he's moving, he is still alive. And he's not sick at all. A lot of people may mistake this for being a dead caterpillar. But this stage of the tobacco hornworm's life cycle is actually uh, the beginning of his pre-pupil stage. What it is, is inside of his skin, and this is why it's firm to the touch, he's building his cocoon underneath his skin. And once it's completed, and he gains the enough energy to do so, he's going to shed this skin... To reveal a cocoon. Or a chrysalis. Which would be more accurate. Or a pupa. Now. Unlike most caterpillars. You would think that I would have to have a branch for him to climb on. And uh, hang upside down. These caterpillars do not do that. He is not a butterfly. He is a moth. What this caterpillar does. He'll either dig underground. And do it underground. That's what's mostly common. But I don't. Uh. Tech really prefer I don't really want him to do that in this case because um a few things could go wrong. One, I'll never be able to find him to watch his development, which I really like doing. Um but the second thing is that when he hatches and they start to crawl up to the top to the surface, their wings can get very ripped up and crumpled up in the process. And then in here, as you can see, there really isn't anywhere for it to climb on it's not particularly good at climbing up a solid glass wall as um pretty much most things are not good at that but yeah so i'm going to try and keep him in a in a little thing with a little bit of leaves so that he thinks he's uh underground or hidden and then once he makes his little pupa i will do a video on that and uh, I'll probably do a video before also on uh, what he looks like just before because he's going to shrink much more. If you recall from past videos, he was about roughly this big and he was very, very fat. He is not fat anymore. He is not that big. And, um, and he's also darker in color and he's very firm to the touch and not very soggy or um, limp, if you will. And you can see, if I hold him like this, he is very firm on the inside. His uh, suction cups are all um, dried out, and they're not sticky anymore. And he really can't really do too much mobility, because uh, for the most part, he's lost most control of his limbs, being that underneath is a uh, solid cocoon. Usually at this stage, I won't mind putting them in dirt, because they're not going to be able to crawl much anyways to go underneath. However, um, what I might do sometimes is maybe fill something like this with a little bit of the dirt, and then put it in. Yeah, I might fill this with a little bit of dirt, put it in, and then he'll dig down to the bottom of this, and then I'll just be able to dig him out later much easier. Uh, but I'm not worried about him. He's been in here for a few days already. And he hasn't had really any problem. He hasn't showed any interest in uh, digging underneath. If he does do that, you know, I'll look for him. As you may have seen with my past video with the fig cutting. I was looking for that all over the place. I'll just do the same thing with him. 
Uh, one thing I forgot to mention in my video with these plants is that I do have an orange cutting. Um, it was on the side here, I forgot to mention it, so I'll just mention it in this video here. You will see it in future garden updates if you don't see it on this video. But yeah, here is an orange cutting that um, I'm trying to grow. If anyone knows a, a quick way to root it without using chemicals or a better way to uh, increase the chance of it rooting and surviving, please let me know. I'd be really happy to hear what advice you have to give. And yeah, so this guy isn't dead. Many people mistake this for being a dead caterpillar. It is not dead at all. It is just uh, getting ready to enter probably the most important stage of its life. Now I'm going to show you my uh, my pupae. I'm going to put this camera down for a minute while I get this pupae out. He's pretty close to hatching. I mentioned this a few weeks ago, I believe in a previous video. And how you'll be able to start to see wing patterns, as many of you may know who's had any cocoon at all. They'll start to see wing patterns before they hatch. And uh, we're starting to get sort of a glimpse of that in this little guy. I know the camera doesn't want to focus right now. I'm trying to get it to focus. Um, sorry for that. Let me see if I could grab this guy. And get him into an angle that you can see him. Okay. You could see somewhat of a wing pattern uh, developing. There, my camera isn't focusing at all. Come down gently. But yeah, he's also starting to get a little bit darker in color. And he is not dead either. I know a lot of times tobacco hornworms will be very active and wiggly, but throughout his entire um, time in his cocoon, he never really was an active, uh, an active little pupa. He never really was, so I'm going to close his enclosure. Yeah, he just never really was that active. So, I'm not concerned. I do know how to tell when they are uh, dead. Usually they'll be much lighter weight. And um, they'll start to get these splotches on them that uh, of discoloration that really don't look that appealing. And, um... Yeah, you generally, like, if you have one for the first time, you're not going to notice because you don't know what changes or differences to look for. But I've been doing this for quite a while, for about a year now, so I know what to feel for. If you do it for some time, eventually you'll start to feel differences between a dead and a live one, and you'll be able to easily point out the live ones and the dead ones, and draw out the dead ones, or put them, in my case, um, I never draw out anything if I have a caterpillar or anything that dies. I simply put it in with the plants, that way it um, fulfills some sort of purpose in fertilizing the plants and giving them nutrients. Uh, so yeah, uh, everything goes to use, from a dead bug to a dead plant, soil that's old or whatever. It can all go to use in some way to uh, go into something productive and something that's meaningful, it's like this. Dead pieces of old pieces of potato, anything like that, but you don't want to do too much because nitrogen will be too high. But if you put some in here, you could put some in another plant and some outside for the wild plants. Uh, go to a local park, just throw it in a area where it can be fertilized for the trees and for the rest of wildlife, wildlife, anything like that. Of course, I'm not saying to um. To litter garbage such as plastics and stuff like that. I do not recommend that. That does not have a purpose because it's man-made. Most things man-made do not have a real purpose in the wild. But things that are natural such as fruits or stuff like that. They do have a purpose in the wild. And there are natural processes that take care of them. So let nature do its thing. If you um, don't want to take something like a fruit and put it, throw it away in the park. Because you're worried that, you know, the seeds could grow and it could cause some type of ecological thing. You could throw it in something like this, let it decompose or whatever, and then save it as your own personal fertilizer to use. And then cut out any saplings or whatever that may grow at that time. So I'm going to actually put this video in both the um, caterpillar update video and as a plant update video. I'm going to put it on both, uh, both playlists so that um, 
you guys can see it because it's a combination of both. And uh, thank you and have a good night.